हेलो एवरीवन इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग थ्रू द एंटीर पिचुटरी हार्मोन ग्रोथ हार्मोन सम बेसिक इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द ग्रोथ हार्मोन इट इज सिक्रेटेड बाय सोमेटोट्रॉप्स व्हिच आर द सेल्स ऑफ द एंटीर पिचुटरी ग्लैंड इट इज अ पेप्टाइड हार्मोन व्हिच हैविंग द 191 अमाइनो एसिड्स मॉलिक्यूलर वेट 21500 ड्यूरिंग चाइल्डहुड ग्रोथ हार्मोन इज एट मैक्सिमम लेवल when the growth hormone is too little secreted the person becomes small which is known as dwarf when the growth hormone is more secreted the person becomes giant it is known as gigantism we will see later on anterior pituitary which releases the growth hormone growth hormone reaches the liver and there will be releasing of the somatomedin c that is also known as insulin like growth factor 1 so in the form of this somatomedin c or insulin like growth vector growth hormone potentiate their effect hence it is strongly attached to the proteins the release is very slow and peak at the puberty and reduces after 50 years so what is the effect of growth hormone on metabolism first of all carbohydrate metabolism it decreases the use of glucose for the energy it increases the glycogen deposition in the cell initially there is increase but uh, later on there will be decrease in the uptake of glucose by cells as cells are saturated with the glycogen once the cells are saturated with the glycogen there will be decrease in the uptake of the glucose by the cell as there is a increase in the blood glucose level there will be also increase in the insulin secretion that is the indirect effect and it also causes the decrease in the sensitivity to the insulin and uh, so it having the diabetogenic effect so it's a diabetes causing hormone we can consider because it causing the hyperglycemia this insulin carbohydrate and uh, growth hormone all three are needed for the growth and development of a normal person so that is the overall effect of growth hormone on the carbohydrate metabolism on protein metabolism it increases amino acid transport inside the cells it increases the dna transcription rna translation and protein synthesis once the amino acid transport inside the cell is enhanced it is ultimately leads to increase in the protein synthesis and it decreases the catabolism of protein and amino acids so that is having the protein synthesis effect and the muscular growth specifically we can say on the fat metabolism it increases the release of fatty acid and this fatty acid is utilized for the energy so act as a protein sparer that means in the presence of growth hormone protein is not utilized for the energy purpose but here the fatty acid is utilized for the energy purpose it having the ketogenic effect as in the presence of growth hormone ketosis of free fatty acid is increased so these are the effect of growth hormone on the protein and fat metabolism effect of growth hormone on growth bones in bones there will be increase in the length of bones before union of epiphysis before the union of the epiphysis there will be increase in the length of the bone under the effect of growth hormone it increase the girth after union of epiphysis once the epiphysis union takes place the length of the bone becomes not going to increase but the girth that mean thickness of the bone becomes increases in the soft tissues it increase the mitosis for example in liver and uh, growth of collagen muscle and viscera so having the overall growth effect on the soft tissues so that is the graph you are seeing that here it is the controlled weight and when the same person is infused or injected daily with the growth hormone their weight becomes increasing that means it uh, participate in the various growth and development process of the person effect of growth hormone on cartilage and bones it increases the deposition of proteins it increases the rate of reproduction of cells deposition of new bones also takes place and what is the mechanism in long bones elongation of shaft by deposition of new cartilages so under the effect of growth hormone in the long bones there will be elongation of this shaft 
and in the flat bones deposition on surface by increase osteoblasts osteoblasts are the cells which uh, helps in the growth and development of the bone now what is the direct and indirect effect of the growth hormone so first the direct effect of the growth hormone it causes the epiphyseal growth or the linear growth of the body secondly due to its effect on the protein synthesis it causes the skeletal muscle growth on viscera there will be increase in the size of the viscera on metabolism it decrease glucose uptake so the glucose level is high inside the our blood and it having the diabetogenic effect that means it causes the hyperglycemia it decrease gluconeogenesis and uh, it decrease lipolysis and decrease adiposity that means the adipose tissue becomes reduced hence it is releasing the free fatty acid or fatty acid and fatty acid is utilized for the energy purpose it decrease the insulin sensitivity so these are the direct effect of the growth hormone now the indirect effects of the growth hormone it is via the insulin like growth factor 1 which is secreted from the liver and uh, it causes the epiphyseal growth visceral growth on metabolism it prevents the lipolysis and increase the protein synthesis and it having the insulin like activity so these are the direct and indirect effect of the growth hormone on different tissues of our body regulation of growth hormone so here the growth hormone is uh, regulated by the hypothalamic control and uh, there are two hypothalamic hormones regulating the growth hormone growth hormone releasing hormone and growth hormone inhibitory hormone or somatostatins uh, the control mechanism working over here it is the negative feedback control mechanisms which is controlled by the somatomedins and negative feedback controlled by the gh rh and growth hormone so there are two negative feedback mechanisms so we are seeing over here so from the hypothalamus the growth hormone releasing hormone is released once the growth hormone releasing hormone is released it having the negative feedback on the hypothalamus so there will not be any more synthesis of ghrh now this ghrh stimulate the anterior pituitary gland and uh, hence there will be release of the growth hormone into the blood circulation this growth hormone reaches to the target tissues the effect of growth hormone potentiate via the release of somatomedins these are the insulin like growth factor so once the insulin like growth factor is released it having the negative feedback over the anterior pituitary gland so there will not be any uh, release of the growth hormone so these are the two negative feedback mechanism first at the ghrh hypothalamus level and second at the uh, somatomedin and anterior pituitary level now one more important thing is that this growth hormone and somatomedins both simultaneously stimulate the release of somatostatins or growth hormone inhibitory hormone and uh, so it having the negatively effect on the anterior pituitary and all these things becomes stopped so that is the regulation of growth hormone regulation of growth hormone it is released in a pulsatile manner so always remember growth hormone is not uh, secreted uh, in large quantity but secretion is pulsatile secretion is increased by the sleep stress hormones related to puberty starvation exercise and hypoglycemia these are all factors increasing the secretion of the growth hormone now secretion is decreased by somatostatins somatomedins obesity hypoglycemia and pregnancy so these all are the factors which either increase or decrease the release of growth hormone growth hormone variations during the day when you are doing the strenuous exercise the growth hormone secretion will become increased and that is the reason the person who is doing the exercise regularly having the good body build and growth and development and secondly during the sleep there is also increase in the growth hormone secretion when the protein is deficient kosciokor the growth hormone level becomes higher much more when the carbohydrate treatment the growth hormone level doesn't decrease and it still remains the high level and uh, with the protein treatment there will be reduction in the growth hormone level now the applied aspect of the growth hormone first pituitary dwarfism what is the cause of this 
deficiency of growth hormone since childhood from the childhood when the growth hormone is deficient it is known as pituitary dwarfism features normal growth up to 3 years afterwards dwarfism but growth is proportionate that means the person having the normal growth up to the age of 3 years but after 3 years the length that means height of the person is not going to increase but the growth is proportionate that means upper limb lower limb and all the body parts growth becomes proportionate to each other in this pituitary dwarfism there is pure growth hormone deficiency but still they having the normal sexual organ growth pan hypopituitarism no development of sexual functions and in this there is one condition which is african pygmy and it's a hereditary condition in which there will be no formation of somatomedins now what is the treatment options treatment uh, is the administration of growth hormone either human or synthetic depending upon the availability we have to give to the patients of the pituitary dwarfism now the second thing acromegaly and gigantism it is caused by acidophilic adenomas of the somatotrophs so that is the cause how the acromegaly and gigantism takes place excess growth hormone leads to development of gigantism if hypersecretion is present during the early life it's a rare condition that means in the early life of a person when the growth hormone is excess in level that means high growth hormone level it causes the gigantism symmetrical enlargement of body resulting in true giant with overgrowth of the long bones connective tissues and visceral organs that means before the epiphysis union the growth hormone excess which leads to elongation of the bones so there will be overgrowth of the bones connective tissue and along with the visceral organs are also there symmetrical enlargement of the body so the body becomes much more looks enlarged than any other normal person now the second condition excess growth hormone which leads to acromegaly if the hyper secretion occurs after body growth had stopped so in this uh, patients elongation of long bones is not possible as the epiphysis union takes place and due to this the length of a person or the height of the person is not going to increase but there will be over growth of the body will become increased for example over growth of the cancellous bones uh, which causes the protruding jaw along with the thickening of the phalanges and overgrowth of the visceral organs so these are the two conditions gigantism and acromegaly so now we are continuing with the second hormone from the anterior pituitary gland which is the prolactin it's a polypeptide hormone containing 198 amino acids molecular weight around 23000 it is secreted from the lactotrophs of the anterior pituitary gland it is the main hormone which is responsible for lactogenesis from the mammary gland that means this hormone stimulate the production of the milk in the mammary gland lactotroph population increases during the pregnancy lactation and estrogen therapy so these three are the stimulating factor for the increase secretion of prolactin via increase in the lactotroph cells from the anterior pituitary gland with estrogen it is helpful in the breast development and it is structurally homologous to the growth hormone so these are some introduction as well as characteristic features of the prolactin now the regulation of prolactin secretion hypothalamic control by the dopamine and thyrotropin releasing hormone so here it is the hypothalamus and hypothalamus control the prolactin release via it action on the thyrotropin releasing hormone and dopamine or the prolactin inhibitory factor prolactin secretion is tonically inhibited by dopamine prolactin inhibitory factor which is secreted by the hypothalamus disturbance of hypothalamic pituitary tract so that is the hypothalamus and that is the anterior pituitary so the relationship between the hypothalamus and pituitary gland when it's disturbed it causes increased secretion of the prolactin and sustained lactation so once the prolactin secretion is continue there will be lactation is also the continuous process 
टी आर एच दैट मीन्स थाइरोट्रोपिन रिलीजिंग हॉर्मोन इंक्रीज इज द प्रोलेक्टिन सिक्रेशन सो हियर इट इज द हाइपोथेलेमस विच रिलीज द टी आर एच दैट मीन्स थाइरोट्रोपिन रिलीजिंग हॉर्मोन विच स्टिम्युलेट द एंटीरेपिच्यूटरी टू सिक्रेट द प्रोलेक्टिन वंस द प्रोलेक्टिन सिक्रेटेड इट हैविंग द इफेक्ट ऑन द मेमोरी ग्लैंड वंस द प्रोलेक्टिन इज प्रेजेंट इन साइड द ब्लड इट स्टिम्युलेट द रिलीज ऑफ डोपामेन और प्रोलेक्टिन इनहिबिटरी फैक्टर फ्रॉम द हाइपोथेलेमस विच इन टर्न इनहिबिट द एंटी पिचुटरी ग्लैंड सो दैट देर विल नॉट बी एनी मोर सिक्रेशन ऑफ द प्रोलेक्टिन फ्रॉम द एंटी पिचुटरी ग्लैंड सो दैट इज द रेगुलेशन ऑफ प्रोलेक्टिन सिक्रेशन इट इज रेगुलेटेड बाई द नेगेटिव फीडबैक कंट्रोल मेकेनिज्म एंड हियर द प्रोलेक्टिन इनहिबिट्स इट्स ओन सिक्रेशन बाई स्टिम्युलेटिंग द हाइपोथेलेमिक रिलीज ऑफ द डोपामिन and i just told you that prolactin inhibits its own secretion by stimulating the hypothalamus by the release of dopamine so due to this dopamine release which is stimulated by the prolactin it inhibit the anterior pituitary gland and ultimately prolactin secretion stopped so that is the regulation of prolactin secretion now the actions of prolactin it stimulates the milk production lactogenesis in the breast or the mammary gland it also stimulates the breast development which having the supportive role with the estrogen or in some other words with estrogen prolactin stimulates the breast development or the development of the mammary gland it inhibits the ovulation by decreasing the synthesis and release of gonadotropin releasing hormone ghrh that is the reason that the lactating woman is not going through the menstrual cycle because in a lactating woman there is a presence of prolactin which inhibits the ovulation how by decreasing synthesis and release of gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus in males it inhibits the spermatogenesis by decreasing the gnrh so these are the some actions of the prolactin hormone mainly stimulate the lactogenesis as well as development of the mammary gland now the pathophysiology of the prolactin prolactin deficiency which is due to destruction of the anterior pituitary gland cells or the lactotropes which secretes the prolactin hormone it results in the failure to lactate because the lactation is not possible without the prolactin hormone when there is a excess prolactin is present inside the body then it results from hypothalamic destruction due to loss of tonic inhibitory control by the dopamine so once the hypothalamus is destroyed so that the inhibitory control over the release of the anterior pituitary of the prolactin has been stopped or from the prolactin secretory tumors these are the prolactinomas there will be increase in the prolactin concentration level inside the blood it causes galactorrhea and decrease the libido so these are the some effect of prolactin excess that is the galactorrhea and decrease libido that means decrease sexual desire now you already know that prolactin inhibit the ovulation so the woman who having the excess prolactin level failure to ovulate and they are suffering from the amenorrhea because it inhibits the gonadotropin release and secretion from the hypothalamus this can be treated with the bromocriptin which reduces the prolactin secretion by acting as a dopamine agonist so here when the excess prolactin hormone is present in the woman's body then we have to prescribe them bromocriptin which is a dopamine agonist so it acts as a dopamine and inhibit the anterior pituitary gland so that there will be no release of more prolactin hormone after the treatment so this is the pathophysiology of the prolactin hormone i hope by this presentation now you are able to understand the growth hormone and prolactin and both of these hormones are released from the anterior pituitary gland and the rest of the anterior pituitary hormones will be discussed in the respective chapters if you like this presentation please try to share it with your friends groups peers and colleagues thank you everyone